Elon Musk has said that Tesla's airbags are so insanely good that unbelted child sitting in a in a bad position probably still fine. Really? Unbelted, probably still fine. Wow. We know Tesla has the safest cars in the world, but are Tesla airbags really so good that you don't need a seatbelt as Elon suggests? What is Tesla doing with their airbag system that helps their cars be so safe? We dove into over 60 pages of patent filings to find out. Stick around. These days, actually, with advanced airbags, actually, I'm not. I think we might have come full circle and no longer need seatbelts if you have advanced airbags. Really? But always wear a seatbelt. Pop quiz: What did Elon Musk say is Tesla's number one design goal? Is it performance? <laughs> Handling? Maybe convenience? Or is it fun? Safety, actually, is Tesla's primary design goal. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that safety is paramount at Tesla. Even though they invest a ton in improving the performance of their cars, I mean, they have the quickest production car on the market. Safety still trumps even performance. It's the number one thing. And fart mode is number two, apparently. And their focus on safety shows. Tesla's cars always get top marks for safety. In fact, Tesla's cars have the lowest probability of injury of any car by the NHTSA standards. There are regular Twitter threads of people sharing their stories of how Tesla saved their lives, the lives of their loved ones. Even if they got T-boned at 70 plus miles per hour, crazy. Why are Tesla's cars the safest? Many reasons. You probably know that Teslas have something called a frunk. A trunk in the front. A front trunk. Trunk front. A front trunk. They don't need an engine there because they're all electric. Besides the benefit of extra storage, it's also very beneficial for safety because it creates a big crumple zone, which helps distribute frontal impact. And because Tesla has its heavy battery on the bottom of the car, it not only handles really well, it also helps protect against rollover in dangerous situations. Unlike this car. Teslas also have sensors and cameras all around the car that give them real world data so they can simulate realistic crashes that the Highway Safety Administration doesn't even test for. You can see here the limited crash scenarios that the standard tests cover, but when you look at this data heat map of real world crashes, you can see that the hotspots aren't even being tested for. Industry standard crash testing is focused on impacts directly into the door. We've noticed in the field that it's very common for impacts not to hit the door. It's clear that Tesla is dedicated to safety. And in this video, we'll deep dive into how their obsession for safety influences their unique airbag system. Airbags are so good, you, it will blow your mind. So how do airbags work anyway? There's a great video from the Lessex channel, linked in the description, that goes into this in detail. But in a nutshell, when there's a violent change in speed of the car, the car will take inputs from a variety of sensors to understand the severity of the crash. That then sends an electrical impulse that causes a mini explosion that will fill your airbag very quickly with gas. All of this is done within milliseconds. But because these airbags inflate so quickly, 200 miles per hour in fact, they can also be dangerous. If you're not wearing a seatbelt and hit the airbag while it's inflating, it can be even more lethal than if you were to have hit your car. So if you're leaning forward, if your frame is smaller than the average male, if you're in a rear facing car seat or whatever, airbag deployment can actually underperform its true potential or in the worst case be actually harmful. To help with that, these days your traditional airbag systems will have occupant detection and classification systems. You know the thing that knows when there's someone sitting there without a seatbelt on? Oftentimes the occupant detection system is a weight sensor in a chair. And in addition to knowing if someone is sitting there, it will also try to classify what kind of person is there, whether it's a child, 5th percentile female, 50th percentile male. Depending on the classification, it may suppress the airbag or deploy the small airbag protocol or large airbag protocol. But these occupant detection systems aren't always that great. 
In Tesla's airbag system patent application, it says, occupant detection and classification has conventionally been relatively difficult. It then goes on to elaborate that though a child a 5th percentile female and a 50th percentile male might be fairly easy to classify, it can be fuzzy to accurately classify the occupant when they don't fit into those limited categories, and especially if the person is sitting in an interesting position. This can be less than ideal because maybe you're 75 pounds and 10 years old and some airbags should deploy, but you get none. Or you're a 50th percentile average female and should get a medium airbag, but instead you get the large airbag. In fact, though airbags have been immensely helpful in helping with car accidents, there's a gender gap, so to speak, in terms of car safety. Females are actually 17% more likely to be killed and 73% more likely to be seriously injured than males in similar crashes. And this is where Tesla's innovation comes in. Tesla's patent shows in an advanced occupant classification system that isn't just a weight sensor, but monitors pressure distribution that grants it greater sensitivity to more accurately and granularly classify occupants. So we'll calculate, you know, are you an adult? Like, how much do you weigh? Are you sitting in this part of the seat or that part of the seat? Are you maybe a baby? Are you a toddler? Are you... Based on the weight? Yeah. So the seat... The, not just the weight, but the pressure distribu distribution on the seat. So we're measuring the pressure distribution. Are you sitting on the edge of your seat? Are you a 5th percentile female, a 95th percentile male? With the more nuanced and granular occupant classifications, Tesla can then have a more nuanced airbag deployment instead of just none, small and large. The airbag firing will be different depending upon where you're sitting on the seat and what size you are and what your orientation is. Really? Yeah. The patent outlines five different potential modes of deployment. One mode is to inhibit the airbag. Another mode is, to, is a type one for small children a type two for small adults, a type three for large adults, and a type four for extra large adults. The different types of deployment might vary in their airbag inflation amounts, the number of airbags going off, the position of airbags, types of airbags, and more. Tesla actually has another patent pending that talks about how it can use its cabin camera to personalize settings for the user. For example, it can detect the varying heights of the occupants in the car, and instead of requiring you to manually adjust your AC air vents, it can automatically direct the AC airflow toward the optimal height of the occupant, or wherever they're located. Personalized airbag positioning wasn't explicitly mentioned in the patent, but you can imagine how Tesla might use the cabin camera to position the airbag deployment so that, for example, a shorter person would have more evenly distributed contact with the airbag. Pretty cool, huh? All of this innovation would go beyond what's even tested by the regulatory bodies, since they don't even use crash test dummies that represent your 50th percentile female. And though it likely won't solve it completely, it's a step towards reducing the car safety gender gap we mentioned earlier. So Tesla might be sensing things in a nuanced way, but not actually changing the way the airbags deploy just yet. So again, please, please wear a seatbelt and don't sit like this or this. Bonus airbag fact. Tesla has a unique, specially designed passenger airbag that pretty much engulfs the passenger and hugs their head with little marshmallow wings to protect against angled or offset crashes. Tesla made this special airbag because studies have shown that deaths still occur when vehicles have airbags in these kind of small overlap or oblique or angled crashes. Why does Tesla go above and beyond what's required for safety? Hopefully because they just want to, but also as they try to release self-driving cars, people are going to want to be assured that they'll be safe. You know, it's clear to us now that automatic elevators are safer and better than the human operated elevators of old, but it was a scary transition back then and it took many years for the public to feel comfortable with self-operating elevators even though the tech was there. In the same way, self-driving cars in theory should one day be safer than human-operated cars, but that transition might still be scary for some, and so Tesla wants to assure everyone, from policymakers to writers, that their cars are the safest. If you want more insights into Tesla, why we think they're gonna win self-driving, or if you want insights into other disruptive companies, as well as innovative investment ideas and strategies, make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our site at voltequity.com.